welcome 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 to the cabin cruiser boating adventure In this series of vlogs, I want to reflect on my first 30 months of owning a cabin cruiser. And in this video, I've selected the top 10 best purchases that I've made since buying the boat in November 2018. I'd like to say from the outset that these items have been bought for the boat, but not necessarily by me. So, without further ado, let's start the top 10 countdown. Ten. In 10th place is a recent purchase, it's my Ridge Monkey. With only having a two ring burner and a grill, I found that cooking facilities were quite limiting, mainly to food that you could cook in a saucepan like chili and bolognese and sausage casserole. But with the Ridge Monkey, I'm successfully able to eat up things like pasties, pies, I've even done uh, Yorkshire puddings and uh, oat cakes. I have discovered the best way of using it is to use it under the grill. And that way, well, it saves a lot of fuel because whilst the Ridge Monkey is under the grill, I'm able to boil up water in the kettle using the heat from the grill. So I am able to prepare a much wider range of food and I'm sure I'll find other things to heat up as I go along. Now that will take about 15 to 20 minutes. Which will be enough time to boil the kettle. Nine. Straight in at number nine are the Pearson's guidebooks. I am slowly adding to my collection as the need arises. It's the maps that are the most useful, especially when watching people's vlogs on YouTube, as I can annotate them and keep them up to date. And I do find them useful for working out timings. I also have one of the Nicholson's um, waterway guides. This is number four, the four counties and the Welsh canals. I also find the Nicholson's inland waterways map of Great Britain very useful, especially when I'm planning to visit other canals a little bit further afield that I'm perhaps not going to take the swamp duck to. I've also started to form a small collection of local guides when I can get hold of them. This one is from the Bridgewater and Taunton Canal and it obviously gives quite a lot more detail. Of all the mooring equipment that I have, I now find I use the chains more than most. 
these I got from a well-known chandlery in the Midlands. And these are the most versatile and especially needed on the Ashby Canal, where it's not often easy to use the nappy type pins. And I hate having to hammer the uh, stakes in because they never seem to be that secure. Seven. On the subject of food again, at number seven is the portable cool box fridge that I bought from Halfords. I searched some time to find the right one for the job. There is a difference between a cool box and a fridge. In a cool box it will simply have a fan, so on really hot days it can't really achieve very low temperatures. You need one with a cooling element inside, which this one has. It's just a little metal plate inside, which gets very, very cold. As far as watts are concerned, it is only 46 watts, so the boat's electrical system can easily cope with it. The only modification I made was to add a silver reflector to the lid as on my boat it is kept on the deck and when we have the top down it could get a bit warm and have to work overtime so the reflector certainly helps with that. And of course it really helps to keep basic things like milk and spreads cool and I'm always amazed at how many items I can get in it. In sixth place is a metal jerry can and a festival luggage trolley. The biggest bugbear of a petrol outboard is getting a supply of petrol and you know if you've watched my vlogs how much planning needs to go into that. I sometimes have to walk quite a way to get fuel. So the 20 litre metal jerry can and trolley makes it easy to do and the trolley stores neatly away under the seats on the deck. And from a safety point of view, the jerry can seems a lot better than plastic containers. I always put a piece of blue tape on my uh, petrol tanks when they've got oil mixed with them. Just to uh, remind me that I've already done it. In fifth place is the studio equipment I have bought since starting vlogging my boating adventures in 2019. I include in that camcorders and action cameras. I also invested in green screen equipment and lighting for the studio and this proved to be invaluable especially during the Covid restrictions and lockdowns as much of the footage was made without ever leaving the studio. I was unable to visit the boat for about 12 weeks, but I was still able to film myself apparently standing on the towpath outside the boat and also inside the boat. So of all the camera equipment I bought, the green screen was by far the best investment. Welcome to the Cabin Cruiser Boating Adventure. Welcome to the Cabin Cruiser Boating Adventure. So we're really getting down to some of the most important purchases. In fourth place, I put my latest mobile phone contract, which allows unlimited data. 
This has proved to be invaluable on the boat for many things like uh, finding shops, petrol, places of interest, how to mend things. It provides me with entertainment and also a quite reliable speedometer. I think I've discovered that people's uh, perspective of speed varies such a lot. Most people are okay, but there are a few who see a motorboat with the top down and automatically assume that we are exceeding the speed limit of 4 miles per hour on a canal. So it is useful to be able to look at the speedometer and check the speed and know that they are up a creek without a paddle. Not only does it show you the speed at the time, but it also records your speed history. So it's good to be able to have that so that you can then just ignore them. The speedometer also sounds an alarm if I go over the speed limit. Uh, the River Canal Rescue app could also prove useful and the What Three Words app. Three. In 2020, I purchased a CRT Leisure Mooring on the canal network and this has proved to be a great move for a number of reasons. Firstly, the boating community on the, on the mooring, they are a brilliant group of people and there's a real sense of community with people looking out for one another and helping where they can. I do miss the River Trent but on balance, in spite of the pandemic, I've been able to use the boat much more than when it was in a river marina. And from a cost point of view, a canal side mooring is a lot cheaper than a marina mooring by about half the cost. And I'd much rather be spending my money using the boat than having it bouncing up and down on a pontoon. In number two, Chinese diesel heater. <laughs> now I hardly dare mention the words as I did such a lot of that when I put it in. It was hard work trying to figure out how to get it up to boating standard as there's no absolute instruction book but it was well worth it. I've used it a lot and on some days it can be on 24 seven. It's cheap and it's efficient. I've been able to cruise up and down the Ashby Canal on cold wet days feeling warm and cozy here on the deck. It also means that the dreaded condensation is a bit of a thing of the past. It is very easy to operate. First of all I turn it on here at the master switch and then I turn the little fuel valve then using this handy little key fob, I switch it on. And it takes about five, 10 minutes and the boat will be nice and toasty warm.
one. So the single most useful item I have bought in the first 30 months of owning a cabin cruiser has been the solar power system. Coupled with the two new leisure batteries to store all that free electricity. It's given me the ability to be able to extend my cruising range and not worry about running out of power. This 120 watt solar panel supplies the two 105 amp hour leisure batteries which is enough for a small craft like mine to survive off grid. I still use this small solar maintainer for the starter battery. The batteries and the starter battery are on a separate circuit but can be combined or switched from one to the other if required making it a very flexible system. The small inverter in the circuit enables me to use my laptop off grid and having sweated so much over the boat electrics in the early stages I was so pleased when it passed the boat safety certificate without even a mention. So that was my top 10 of purchases. Now it's obviously not an exhaustive list of all the many items that I have bought, but they would probably be in my top 10. I wonder what yours are. Please let me know in the comments below. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, then please press the subscription button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen on your mobile phone or tablet which is displayed throughout my video. It is a fact that 84.7% of my viewers are not subscribed and it really would help the channel if they were to do so and of course it's absolutely free. It's also interesting that 54.9% uh, of my viewers are from the UK and 9.8% from the USA and 354 are scattered around the rest of the world. So please press the bell icon on the home page of the channel and you'll be notified by YouTube each time I upload a new video. So please give us a thumbs up and leave any comments below as I do enjoy reading them and I will respond to each and every one of them. So thank you for watching and please do take care.